Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about belt lengths. So if you're asked to measure the belt length of a V-belt, and you're not able to physically measure it, then it is possible to estimate what the length of this belt is. And I'm gonna do it with an example and then we'll talk about formulas because I think it's important to understand the concept rather than memorize a formula. And you will understand the formula better once you see the example, I hope. What I'm gonna do is talk about the approximate belt length and it's gonna give you a fairly good estimation. Unless these pulleys are very, very, very different in size and unless they're really far apart, this, is, this estimation is probably gonna be sufficient. So I'm going to start by taking this distance here. This distance around this pulley is approximately half of the circumference of that pulley. So it will be one half of the circumference is pi times d, so one half of pi times 10. Then this distance around this pulley, again, is approximately half of the circumference. So it's one half of the circumference of that pulley which is pi times its diameter of 15 inches. So I've got that covered, that covered. Now I need to find this value and I can estimate this to be approximately 20 inches. Similarly, with this length here, it's also gonna be approximately 20 inches. Won't be exact, but it's gonna be close to that. So we'll take two of those values. So if I multiply 20 by two, that covers that and that and that gives me my approximate belt length. If you have a scientific calculator, it's very easy to calculate this. You can just punch it in as is, one half times pi times 10, plus one half times pi times 15, plus two times 20. A scientific calculator will do all of the multiplications first, and then it will do the addition. If you have a non-scientific calculator, you're gonna to have to calculate each of these separately and then add them. You would not be able to punch them in as you see it. You should get a value of 79.27 inches. So let's come up with our formula based on that example. Basically what we did is we took half of the circumference, so one half of pi times d, plus we took one half of this circumference, so one half pi times, I'll call that diameter, capital D. And then I took two times C, that's center to center distance. That formula will give me approximate belt length. I've seen another formula used, which I'll put here. Instead of calculating half of this circumference, half of that circumference, this formula says, let's just take the average circumference. So the average circumference would be pi, times the average of the two diameters. The average of any two things is you add them and divide by two. And then you add two times the center to center distance. I just want to advise you that when you punch that into your calculator, be very careful because of order of operations. With the previous example, I had a diameter of 10 and a diameter of 15. So that means we add 10 plus 15, divide by two. We have to add first, so that would be 25 divided by two, which is 12.5. So that would be our average diameter. However, if you have a scientific calculator and you just punch in 10 plus 15 divided by two, it's not gonna give you 12.5. What a scientific calculator does is follows order of operations. So it would, if you typed it in as 10 plus 15, divided by two, it's going to do this first. And that value would give you 17.5. So either calculate your average diameter without a calculator, or if you're gonna use a calculator, remember order of operations, put a set of brackets, and that will force your calculator to do the addition first. So instead of typing it in this way on my calculator, I would type this as brackets, 10 plus 15, end of brackets, divided by two. That will force the calculator to add first and then divide by two. 
So that's a very common mistakes I saw a lot of students make. And just be aware of that with your calculator. The other uh, calculation you might be asked to do with belt lengths is to calculate how much belt is rolled up on a coil. So let's take a look at that. In order to calculate the amount of belt wrapped up in this particular coil, I need to know the core diameter, I need to know the outside diameter, and I need to know the belt thickness. Again, I can give you formulas to calculate this, but what I want to do is show you how I can do this question without the formulas, and then from that we'll get the formulas. Because to me, if you understand the process, you're going to remember the formulas better or you won't need the formulas to do the calculations. So in order to find the approximate belt length wrapped up in this coil, I need to calculate two things. I need to know how many wraps there are, how many layers of belt are there. And in order to do that, I'm going to take this value here, and the way I determine that is I take the total diameter, the outside diameter is 25, subtract five inches, that gives me 20 inches on this side and this side. So this side would be 10 inches and this side would be 10 inches. I'm just gonna focus on this side. And then what I'm going to do is find out how many layers of belt I have in this length here. If my belt was two inches thick, I would take 10 inches and divide by two inches and I would get five layers or five wraps. But my Belt thickness is three quarters of an inch. So the number of wraps can be calculated by taking that 10 inches and dividing by the belt thickness in order to divide with fractions. I multiply by the reciprocal. Or you can change three quarters of an inch to a decimal, 0.75, and then take 10 and divide by 0.75. Whichever way you do it, you should get 13.3333 repeating. I'm going to write it down as 13.3, but I'm going to use the value that I actually have on my calculator that has 13.333 repeating. All right, so I know how many layers or how many wraps. Every wrap will have a length equal to the circumference. But I don't want to calculate each individual wrap. Instead, I'm going to take the average. I'm going to take the circle right in the middle, and half of the circles will be less than that circumference, and half of them will be greater than that circumference. But if I take the average, that covers all of them. So what I want to know is what is the distance or the circumference of the circle right in between this circle and this circle? So that's called average circumference. And I have to take, the circumference of any circle is pi times its diameter. So I have to take pi and multiply by the average diameter. Now, how do I find the average of 5 and 25? I simply add them up and divide by 2. I encourage you to do it without a calculator because it's fairly straightforward. 5 plus 25 is 30, divide by 2 is 15. Again, if you use a calculator, just be very, very careful. If you type it in as pi times 5 plus 25 divided by 2, it won't work. You're going to need to calculate the 5 plus 25 before you do any multiplication or division. So you, if you are going to use your calculator, put a set of brackets around those. When we calculate this, we get 47.12 inches. Again, I've written down the rounded off number, but I'm going to keep it on my calculator. Now, what I'm going to do next is say that this is, this is the length around the average circle, and this is how many circles I have. So to find my total length, I'm going to multiply these two values. So my approximate length will equal the number of wraps times the average circumference. 
So I've got 13.3 wraps times 47.12 inches. When I multiply those, I get 628.3 inches. Because it's such a large length, I probably want to change it to feet. And in order to change it to feet, I divide by 12. So if I divide this by 12, I get 52.4 feet. That's approximately what length of belt I have wrapped up on that coil. Now, if you're the type of person that likes a formula, let me show you the formulas. So what I'm going to do is break it down and put the formula for each of these and then put them together to get your total length. So the number of wraps is going to be this distance here. And the way I can define that distance is big D minus little d if big D represents the outside diameter and little d represents the inside diameter. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So I'm going to take big D minus little d, divide by 2. And what that gives me is this length right here. And then what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to divide by the belt thickness. That gives me the number of layers. The average circumference, the length of this circle that's right in between these two circles, can be found by taking pi times the average diameter, and the average diameter will be big D plus little d divided by 2. So in this case, we subtracted. In this case, we added. Just be careful that you don't get those mixed up. Now that we have number of wraps and average circumference, the total length will be the product of those two things. So This gives me number of wraps, and I multiply that to the average circumference. And that gives you the whole formula for calculating belt length of belt wrapped up in a coil. I've mentioned the mistake I see students make with order of operations on their calculator and being careful with that. The other mistake I see is students forgetting about pi. To get circumference, you have to multiply the diameter by pi. This formula is going to give you approximate belt length, which should probably be fairly accurate unless your belt is very loosely wrapped.